This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, we want to thank you for such a privilege, Lord, to stand in your presence without any fear, without any shame, without any guilt, without any condemnation, all because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because those of us who, who are far off from you, you have brought us near by the blood of your son, Jesus. And Lord, we stand in the state of favor before you. And Father, Lord, tonight we ask, Lord, that our eyes will be open, that, Lord, we may see, Lord, more than ever before, clearer what Christ has already done in us. And also help us, Father, that we will also understand what Christ still wants to do through us. And sweet Holy Spirit, we just embrace you. And we'll open our heart and our mind to your ministry and to your work. That we walk in every heart in our midst today. And let Christ be exalted. Let Christ be magnified. Let Christ be glorified. And let everyone here be energized, motivated, inspired, and empowered by your spirit. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight, uh, we will be looking at uh, the ministry of Jesus that is called the Ministry of Reconciliation. The Ministry of Reconciliation. When simply put, uh, Jesus' ministry can be called the Ministry of Reconciliation. Essentially, that is what it's all about. The death of Jesus, all right? The finished work of Jesus has just one goal, and the goal is to reconcile a strange man back to God, all right? So Jesus came as a mediator. Jesus came as a go-between uh, the holy God and sinful men, all right? And all that he did is to achieve this one uh, a goal to bring us near, to bring us back into harmony, to bring us back into friendship, into close, loving, eternal relationship with God. That is the ministry of Jesus. Do you understand? All right, let's look at the book of First Timothy chapter 2. Look at how Paul presented to us in the scripture. So we are looking at the ministry of Jesus uh, tonight, the ministry of reconciliation. And we're going to see uh, what that is all about and what is our part, what is Christ doing now in us and through us. The book of First Timothy chapter 2, 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator, between God and man, and who is that mediator? The man Christ Jesus. So how did he mediate? He gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. All right? Because the justice of God demands that the transgressor of God's law be punished. All right? So there's no way you can reconcile a sinful man, a transgressor, an enemy of God, back to the holy God without the justice of God being satisfied. Are you listening to me? So Jesus, God in Christ came, and you know what? Then he received the penalty, the punishment, the wages of our sin. That is the only way that he could reconcile man to God. You understand? That's why the Bible says he gave himself as a ransom for all. That word mediator uh, is the Greek word that is called mesites, M-E-S-I-T-E-S. If you have it there, can you put it on the screen? Now, we're going to do a little bit of uh, looking into uh, Greek uh, word today because it's important. So, mesites, a mediator, means one who will intervene between two parties in order to make or to restore peace and friendship. That's a mediator. It's mesites. It means one that come between, that intervenes between two parties that are at war. All right? And then he, he intervenes and his goal is to restore peace and friendship again. All right? Now, a mediator, mesites, is called an arbitrator, a go between. It's called a reconciler. And that is who Jesus is. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That is what he came to do. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, the book of Ephesians 2, 13 and 18. 
Uh, please follow me closely this evening. But now from verse 13, now this is Paul now writing to the Gentiles, uh, that is the non-Jew that are, have become converted or have become born again, that are children of God. And look at what he says to us, all right? Because we are Gentiles as well, all right? He said, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were what? Far off. You have been brought near by what? The blood of Christ. So you see, we don't, we don't ask God. We don't pray to be nearer to God anymore. Are you listening to me? That's not New Testament prayer. You know why? You cannot be nearer than the blood has brought you. Are you paying attention to me? The blood has brought you near close to God. You cannot by any means get closer. All right? You are brought into oneness with God, into intimacy with God. That is what Christ did. Now, we were apart from God, separated by sin. Sin of Adam brought separation. So, it is not that God does not love man anymore, but you see, because of sin. Alright? Now, the sinful man cannot stand anymore in the presence of holy God without any condemnation, without fear, without guilt. But thank God for the blood of Christ. It bridged the gap. That's why it's called the go between. He closed up the gap. He brought us that are far off from God. He brought us near to him. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, verse 14, for he himself is what? Our peace. Not only did he restore peace, he is what? Our peace. You can't have peace with God without him. Who has made both one? Now he's referring to the Jews and the non-Jew, the Gentile. He has broken down the middle wall of separation. Even in their temple in those days, the Gentiles and the Jew cannot worship together. There's a wall that separated them. All right? But thank God for Jesus. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandment, containing ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man, talking of the new creation, from the two doors making peace. Now, look at verse 16 very well, and that he might reconcile them, that is, whether you are Jew or non-Jew, Jesus came to do what? To reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. He did it through what is dead on the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Alright? Now verse 17 and 18, and he came and preached peace to you who are far off the Gentile and to those who are near the Jew. For through him we both have what? Houses by one spirit to the Father. That is the ministry of reconciliation. That is what Jesus Christ came to do. And do you know what? He accomplished it perfectly. Colossians 1, 19 to 22. Now Paul writes, For he pleased the Father, that in him that is in Christ, all the fullness should dwell. And by him, now that is important to understand, all right? Now by the end of this meeting, you will understand why it's so important to understand the basis of reconciliation, to understand the means of reconciliation, to understand how it was accomplished. It is by him, by Christ, by what he did. Are you paying attention? By him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, that is Christ, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated, that is separated, and enemies in your mind by wicked words, yet now he has what? Reconciled. How many of us believe that we have been reconciled to God? Hallelujah. Let somebody say, I am reconciled to God. That is important. He has reconciled us. We don't try to do it. We don't try to get closer to God. We don't try to come nearer to God. We have been brought to God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? We have been brought into oneness, into relationship. We can't get closer than he has brought us. He reconciled us. There is no enmity between us and God. God is never far away. We are never far away anymore. You may feel like that, but no, you are not far away. God is not far away. You are together in oneness, in unity, in harmony. Christ made it possible. Glory to Christ. Hallelujah. Now, verse 20 says, in the body of his flesh, he did it through death. So the only means of reconciliation is by his death. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It is because he died. It is because he went to the cross. It is because he satisfied the justice of God. That is why I am reconciled to God. That is why you are reconciled to God. All right? In the body of his spirit, true death will present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Now, so what, what, what am I saying tonight? That the ministry of Christ 
What Christ achieved, simply put, is to restore man to relationship with God, to friendship with God, is to bring God to back to a state of favor with God. That Romans chapter 5, 1 and 2, and I prefer it in New Living Translation. Romans chapter 5, 1 and 2, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight, how many of us have been made right in God's sight? Hallelujah! The Bible says we have all peace with God. That is as a result of his reconciliation of the work of Christ. We now have war, peace with God. We are no longer afraid of God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? We can stand in the presence of God. We can say, have a father without fear, without any guilt, without any condemnation. Glory to Jesus. And the Bible says, we are peace with God because of what? Jesus Christ, our Lord has what? Done for us. Not because we could pray. Not because we are righteous. Not because we are generous giver, but because of what he has done. Reconciliation with God is only possible because of what what Christ did. That is important. You will know why, alright? Now look at verse 2 now. Because of our faith now in him, Christ has brought us into this place of what? Undeserved privilege. Where now we stand? Into a state of favor. You see, we don't try to deserve things from God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That is an assault. That is an insult to the work of Christ. He brought us to the place of what? Undeserved privilege. Where we now stand. And you know what? That gives us confidence. And the Bible says we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So, by results of the reconciliation ministry of Jesus, uh, the outcomes of that is that now I stand, now you stand, those of us who have put faith in him and what he did, we stand in a place of undeserved privilege. Are you listening to me? We have favor with God. We have peace with God. We have confidence towards God. Are you paying attention? We share in God's nature. We share in his glory with him. We share in his authority. We are now joined us with Christ. Everything he has now belongs to us. We can call him Abba Father. And you listen to what I, we don't try to clean up to come to his presence. We are accepted all the time. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Nothing separate us again from his law. That is the result of the ministry of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But pay attention, this is where I'm coming to tonight. But you see, now, the purpose of the ministry of Jesus, all right, is not just for you alone to enjoy the outcome, the blessings of what he has done. Are you listening to what? Of course, that is our reality. We enjoy, we enjoy peace with God, confidence towards God. All right, uh, we stand in the place of undeserved privilege. We enjoy the favor of God. We we exercise His authority. We enjoy the inheritance that He has given to us. But you know something? Jesus wants to continue that ministry through us. And that's really what I want us to focus on today. That Christ has accomplished the ministry of reconciliation. But do you know something? He wants the work to be proclaimed through us. That is important. That is important. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is going to be our test. Uh, and I want us to look at it very, very closely. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 to 21. The ministry of reconciliation. That is the ministry of Jesus. And that is what has brought us to the place of undeserved privilege. That is why we can stand before the Lord at all time. Without any fear. Without any shame. Without any guilt. But do you know something? That ministry must be proclaimed through us. He has given us the ministry. Now, so Jesus left us here on earth to continue the ministry. Second Corinthians 5 18. Now all things are of God who has what? Reconciled us to himself through who? Jesus Christ. And do you know what he has done again? He has done what? Giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Let some say, I have a ministry. Are you sure? It is called the ministry of reconciliation. But pastor, I'm not a minister. Who told you that? 
I've not been to the Bible college or seminary. You don't need to. <laughs> Wait, we are starting one soon. But whether you have been to college or not, if you are be, become a partaker, if you have believed in the ministry of Christ, if you have accepted Jesus, if Jesus is your law, if you have uh, become a partaker of the blessings of the ministry of reconciliation of Christ, then he has given you the ministry as well. So every true believer, every born again, every child of God, learned or unlearned, all right? Gifted or not gifted, all right? Now, ordained as a minister or not, you have a ministry, all right? Don't tell me you are still praying for your ministry. This is your ministry. It is the ministry of reconciliation. So every believer has a ministry given to them, and the Bible call it the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Jesus is ministry. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not inputting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We're going to get there. We're going to look at this text very closely. But you see, this is what I'm saying. The day you were saved is also the day you are called and given the ministry of reconciliation. So there's nothing like now I am saved, now I'm waiting for God to come into ministry. Then you don't understand the scripture. If you are saved, then you are called. If you have received Jesus, then you have received his ministry. So receiving Jesus as a Lord and Savior is not just uh, uh, receiving and enjoying the blessing of his work. He's also receiving his ministry. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. So when I receive Jesus, I receive also his ministry. I receive his work. I, I, I enlisted in his seed. Are you with me? Second Timothy chapter 1, look at it from verse 8. Look at what Paul uh, wrote to Timothy. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Pay attention to verse 9, God's people. Who as was well save us, and as what? Call us with a holy call. Can you see the two together? He saved and he called. He did both same time. Are you with me? Amen. Now, look at the scripture. He said, he has saved us, all right? And then we don't need to wait for him to call us because he saved us and he did what? He called us at the same time. With what? A holy calling. Let somebody shout, I have a holy calling. Have Are you sure? Let somebody say, I am saved. I am saved. And called. And called. Now, that is important. If, if there's anything that's... I want you to be so conscious of is that you are not waiting for a calling, you have a holy calling already. You are not waiting for a ministry, you have received a ministry. It's because you don't know. It is the ministry of Jesus and it is the ministry of what? Reconciliation. And you know what? It is not according to our works, all right? But pastor, I don't really know the Bible very well. I've not even finished the Bible all my life. The calling is not according to your works. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? But what? According to his own purpose and grace, which was what? Given to us in Christ Jesus before what? Before time began. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is what? The gift of God. Isn't it? All right. Now, look at verse 9 and 10. Not of words, let any issue bold. For we are his workmanship. Even though we are not saved by our good works, by our self-righteousness, by our performer. But look at it. The Bible says we are what? His workmanship. You see both together in the same context. The gift of God of salvation and then the work that God created us for. So when I'm saved, I don't need to say, I don't know, I don't know what to do. No, <laughs> it's because you don't understand. You are saved and called at the same time. You are saved and set apart for a work at the same time. That's why you sit the same together in the same context. So for we are his workmanship created in Jesus for what? For good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in there. All right? That is the work that we are. And we're going to look, take a look, a close look at that. Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, uh, the Hebrew writer said, Therefore, holy brethren. Do we have holy brethren in the house? All right? Then, now uh, listen to what he called us. I want you to pay attention to the adjectives. He said, holy brethren and what? Partakers of what? The heavenly calling. Let somebody shout, I'm a partaker I'm a of the heavenly calling. Let someone shout, I have a heavenly calling upon my life. Most time we think it's only those who wear, who wear collars that have the heavenly calling. All right. If you are saved, then you have an heavenly calling. Amen. 
Are you with me this morning? This night, all right. He said, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus himself saying to his disciple in John 14, 12, most assuredly I said to you, he who believes in me, the works I do, he will what? Do also. Which work did he do? The work of reconciliation. And he said, greater work than this he will do. You know why? Because he's going to continue the work in me. Are you paying attention? The reason why I will do greater work is because he lives in me, he works in me, and he's going to do much more in me and through me. Is somebody paying attention? So that's what Jesus is saying to them. Before he left them, he said, uh, John 20, 21, peace to you as the Father has sent me. I also send you. What did the Father send him to do? To be a mediator. To reconcile our sinful and enslaved men to God. Alright? Praise God. And so it is our responsibility to see to it that this ministry of reconciliation that has been committed to us, given to us, that we do all, that we fulfill it. Uh, Colossians 4 verse 17. Colossians 4 17. Look at Paul uh, uh, admonition to Archippus. Uh, Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. And Paul write and say to Archippus, take it to the ministry which what you have received in the Lord let's all say you have received a ministry in the Lord take heed to it take heed to it now listen to this, the word take heed is the Greek word blepo, B-L-E-P-O do you know what it means? it means to turn your mind to turn your thought, your attention to something in other words, don't be distracted from it so when Paul wrote to Archippus and said, take heed to, to the ministry that you are receiving the Lord that you fulfill it. You know what he was saying to him? And that is what God is saying to you. He said, pay attention to him. That's what he said. Don't be distracted from it. It is very important. So the ministry of reconciliation that God has given to us, God is asking me to tell you this evening to pay attention to it. Don't be distracted from it. It is very important to God. Jesus died because of it. Are you listening to me? And he said, which you have received in the Lord that you may well fulfill it. The word fulfill there is the Greek word play around. P-L-E-R-O-O. Now, listen to what it means. There is no time while you are alive that you will say, thank you Lord Jesus. Now I have finished the ministry of reconciliation. Can you give me another ministry? No. The word play around means you carry it on. Carry it out. That's what it means. Perform it. As long as I have my breath, and you listen to me, I still have the ministry of reconciliation to carry out. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right? So it is not something you do on part-time, all right? When you go about your normal uh, business, your work, you still pay attention to it. That's the only way you carry it out. You have to be conscious of it. You have to direct your mind. That is why you are alive. Christ that lives in you, that is what you want to continue to do. The work I do, you will do. Greater war. And he's talking about his ministry, all right? So Jesus lives in me. Are you paying attention? And I carry him wherever I go. And guess what Jesus wants to do? To continue the work. The work of reconciliation. So how do we carry it out? How do I do it? How do I fulfill the ministry of reconciliation that I have been given? Let's go back to our text. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let's read 18 and 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's see how far we can go with that tonight. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And I'm going to read this uh, in some other Bible rendition. So that we could have a good grasp. Or what the scripture is saying, 18 and 19. Now all things of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and he has given us. That's important. The ministry of reconciliation. I have been given the ministry of reconciliation. You have been what? Given. It is your primary ministry. Are you with me? Alright. Now, so how do you carry it out? The answer is in verse 9. So let's find the answer. That is... That God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses to death, and he has done what? Committed to us what? The word of what? Reconciliation. Now, now Jesus is not asking me to go on the cross and die, all right, for the world to be saved. My blood is not that pure to save the world. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? No, that's not what. That is his own. There is a part he play in the ministry of reconciliation that I can never do, all right, because it has to be a sinless man. It is God that has to be that mediator. Are you with me? But what is my part in the ministry of reconciliation? In the ministry of Jesus, what am I to do? All right. So verse nineteen says, "Jesus committed to me the word of reconciliation." 
So how do I carry out my own role, my own part in the ministry of reconciliation by committing myself to the proclamation, to the preaching of the word of reconciliation? Did you get it? So, as believers today, we fulfill the ministry of reconciliation. We carry out the ministry of Jesus by the word of reconciliation. Now, now let's read other uh, Bible rendition, and that will uh, paint for us a better, clearer picture. So, let's re- read easy to read version. The same Second Corinthians five eighteen and nineteen. All this is from God through Christ. God made peace between himself and us. And God gave us the work. So it's a work of bringing people into peace with him. That's another uh, description of reconciliation. Bringing people into peace with God. All right. I mean that God was in Christ. Making peace between the world and himself. In Christ, God did not hold people guilty for their sin. We are going to look at that later. And he gave us what? The message of peace to tell people. So how do you fulfill? Your ministry of reconciliation by what? By the message of peace. So it is by telling people the message of peace. It is by telling people what Christ has accomplished. That is the way we fulfill our part in the ministry of reconciliation. Do you get that? Now, let's look at easy uh, English Bible. Okay, let's make it easier, all right? Now, 1819, all this is the work of God. I love that. It is the work of God. Who, because of Christ, has stopped being angry with us? That's good, all right? By Christ, we have become God's friend. So we don't pray to become God's friend. Are, are you with me? That's not New Testament prayer. We are what? God's friends. If you are not God's friend by what Christ did, you can never be God's friend by whatever you do. Is that right? <laughs> Alright, so we are God's friend already. Now, so instead of his enemy, and he wants us to bring, now, so what is our part in the ministry of reconciliation? To bring other people to be what? His friend also. This is the job that he has given us. So as a believer, oh, I don't have a job. You have one, you just don't know. Alright, it is job of bringing people into friendship with God. So this is the job he has given us. Verse 19 says, God wants us. So how do we carry it out? God wants us to tell people that by Christ, he was bringing the world to himself. He was bringing all people in the world back to himself, to be his friend. God was not continuing to remember all the wrong things that people do. This is the message that God has given us. So our message is not to condemn people. Our message is not to tell people how angry God is because he's not angry. Are you with me? All right. Our job is to tell them that God's anger has been at peace forever. Our job is to tell them that sin has been judged and condemned in the body of Christ. Are you with me? That is our job. And that is what we do in the ministry of reconciliation. All right. Jesus went to the cross. Then we tell the people what he did by going to the cross. Do you get it? Now, look at what he said. This is the message that God has given, uh, given to all. He wants us to tell people that he has brought them back to himself. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. So everyone in the world has been reconciled by the blood of Jesus. Amen. But we're going to see. So why is not everyone in, in, in unity, in oneness with Christ? We're going to get there. All right, let's read Good News Bible. And then we'll read New Living Translation. Are you still with me tonight? Yes. So we are looking at the, the ministry of reconciliation and we have seen the part that Jesus played and now we are looking at the part, the role that we have to play, all right? So he went to the cross, he satisfied the justice of God, he took our place, he paid for sin and now our role in the ministry of reconciliation is to tell the people the good news. All right. Now, good news Bible says, I love that. How this is done by God, who through Christ change us from enemy into what? Into his friends. Do we have people that have been changed from enemy into friends? Glory, hallelujah. That's awesome to become God's friend. He gave us what? The task of making all that his friends also. So God does not want it to stop with me. He does not want it to stop with you. Alright? That is our part in the ministry. He gave us the task. It's a job. Now, if you don't see it like that, you will never, never do it. It's a task. It's a job. It's a work that God has given to me. That God has given to you. So, what is it? Our message is that God was making the whole human race his friend through Christ. God did not give an account of their sins. Alright? We don't tell them God has a book recording their sins. Alright? Because he has no such record. He has given us the word, the message. 
We tell us how he makes them his friend. Now, New Living Translation, this is the one I love most. So let's look at how New Living Translation puts it. 18 and 19. So we are trying to see our part and how we do it. All right? 18, 19, 2 Corinthians 5, New Living Translation. And all this is a gift from God. So reconciliation is a gift from God. All right? We're going to see why it's like that. Who brought us back to himself through Christ? That's important. He has brought me to himself. I don't try to come closer to God. I've been brought to him. Is that right? And God has given all these task of reconciling people to him. So we share in the ministry of Christ, which is the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. Listen to this very well. This is beautiful. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And then he has gave us what? This wonderful message of what? Reconciliation. Let somebody shout wonderful. Wonderful. So you see, how do you carry out the ministry of reconciliation? It is by telling people, showing people how wonderful the ministry of reconciliation is. The word wonderful, when I check it out, is powerful. The word wonderful is amazing, astonishing, fantastic, incredible, unbelievable, marvelous, miraculous, wondrous, stupendous, fabulous, glorious, sensational, splendid, divine. So you see, how do we carry out the ministry of reconciliation is by proclaiming the wonderful, the splendid, too good to be true message of reconciliation. But see, the reason why many of us are not excited about winning souls, about evangelizing, or right, the reason why many of us are ashamed is because we do not truly understand how wonderful the message of reconciliation is. It is a wonderful message. Oh, but when am I going to tell someone? How do I tell them? That means you don't really know it. You cannot fulfill the ministry of reconciliation, your part in this ministry of Jesus, without you properly understanding the message of reconciliation. Are you paying attention? Because the way I carry out the ministry of reconciliation is by the message of reconciliation. So, essentially, my part in the ministry of Jesus, which is the ministry of reconciliation, is to be a faithful deliverer, a faithful preacher, a faithful teacher of the message of reconciliation. It is essentially what I do with the message. Is somebody listen to me? How many people are not doing justice with the message? Alright? We are not excited about the message. Alright? Many of us are not delivering the message as true as it is. Alright? It is a wonderful message. It's a message that is fabulous, glorious. It is a sensational message. The early church, they understood it. They went everywhere proclaiming that message. There's no way you will understand, truly understand the message of reconciliation and you will not be excited to share it with some. Are you with me? And what I'm trusting God to do, if we can finish tonight, is to help you understand deeply the wonderful message of reconciliation. Simply put, what Christ did. Alright? And so that you can be inspired. So that you can be motivated. So that you can be energized to share, to deliver this message with joy, with excitement, with passion to other people. Because that is why Christ lives in me now. Are you paying attention? So that I can declare that wonderful message of reconciliation. Uh, do you do you get what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right, you're still with me. Yeah. Now, so what is the wonderful message of reconciliation? What does that mean? The only way we can truly understand the wonderful message of reconciliation is by us understanding the New Testament concept or ideas of reconciliation. And so we're going to do a little bit of uh, deep teaching. All right. So we want to understand what is. The idea, the concept of reconciliation in the New Testament. Don't forget, the ministry of Jesus, we started, is, is the ministry of reconciliation. Is that right? Okay. And then we say, now, it lives in us to continue the ministry. 
We are left here as his ambassador so that we can continue. And he lives in me to continue the war. So Jesus has not stopped working. Are you paying attention? He went to the cross, alright? And then he came to live in me to proclaim what he did on the cross. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? But you see, he's not going to forcefully open my mouth. I need to yield my faculties. I need to open my mouth and let him express the message through me. And if that's going to happen, then I need to understand what he truly did. So, what is the concept? What is the idea of reconciliation in the New Testament? Right? There are two Greek words. Pay attention to this. Don't miss this. There are two Greek words that the New Testament writer used to express, to present, and explain to us two different concepts and ideas of reconciliation. So, what am I saying? There are two types. There are two different types of reconciliation in the New Testament. And we need to understand both, all right? So that we can appreciate what Christ did. Are you ready for that? All right, one is the Greek word that is called dialaso. D-I-A-W-L-A-W-X-O. D-I-A-W-L-A-W-S-O. Dialaso. Now, we understand this in Matthew chapter 5, 21 to 24, all right? So when you see the word reconcile, in the Bible, it's either uh, from the Greek word dialaso, and the second one we're going to get here is called katalaso. All right, so but let's deal with dialaso. Look at Matthew chapter 5, 21 to 24. So we want to understand the concept of reconciliation, the idea, the picture of that. All right, are you still there? Matthew 5, 21 to 24. Now, so here is Jesus now. Uh, talking to the Jews under the law and is using the law uh, uh, to preach to them. So let's hear what Jesus said. Matthew 5, 21 to 24. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. Whoever murder will be in danger of the judgment. Verse 22. But I said to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother Raka, or rather as Aramaic words to mean fool, empty headed, alright? Now, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Thank God we are not under the law. <laughs> many people will be in danger of hellfire because many of us just use that word freely. But you see, the Jew under the law, they know that. You don't call anyone fool. Are you listening to me? You'll be brought before the Sidering Council, all right? And Jesus said, that even go beyond that, you can go to hellfire because of that, all right? Now, verse 23 now. This is where I'm going to 23 and 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, now see what the law says, and dear remember that your brother has what? Something against you. Not you, alright? But that you realize that you pass by your brother and the way he normally greets you has changed, alright? He, he doesn't really greet you. He pretends as if he doesn't see you. Then you know that something is wrong. So when you come to the temple to give your gift, so the law says don't give your gift yet. 24 say, leave your gift there before what? Before the altar, and then go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. A man of God once said, thank God we are not under the law. All right. <laughs> How many people will be able to give their offering in the church? <laughs> because even when you don't have something against you, there are a lot of people that have something against you. And if you have to keep your offering and then go and reconcile with them, when are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But let's understand the concept, the idea of be reconciled. So the law says first do what be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So that is one concept of reconciliation in the New Testament. And the Greek word for that is dialaso. Now this is what it, it means. So the picture is this. So when I remember that something is going on in the heart or in the mind of my brother against me, all right? And he has changed his attitude towards me. It's not as warm, it's not as loving as he used to be. So I go to him and I say, this is what I observe. And then my brother tells me, well, uh, is it called the uh, day before yesterday, you saw me and you pretended you didn't see me, so you didn't greet me. And that's why I also did not greet you today, all right? So what do we do? Then we, 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 we accept our fault, we tender like apologies, alright, and then we restore the friendship and the peace again. This is a mutual thing. Is somebody paying attention? It's a mutual concession. In other words, both of us do it. So it has to involve the change of mind. Uh, of, of both, both parties involved. You know, do you, do you get what I'm talking about? So you say, I am sorry to me, and then I also say, I'm sorry to you. 
Do you understand? It is over. So both of us change our mind. So it is a mutual thing. Both parties involved change their mind. They accepted their faults and apologies and they agreed to renew their friendship. So reconciliation has taken place. Somebody listen to what I'm But this reconciliation is a mutual reconciliation. Do you get it? So that is one concept of reconciliation. But this is not the reconciliation that Jesus accomplished for us. It's not a mutual one. And so let's learn the one that Jesus did, alright? So we want to understand. So I told you there are two Greek words uh, that uh, uh, explain uh, reconciliation in the Bible. Dialazo. The second one is katalazo. Now, pay attention, it's important. Alright? Now, it's spelled K-H-T-A Double L A double S O K H T A double L A double S O Catalasso. Now, why the Alasso, the first one, is between a man and his brother or his friend? Are you with me? Now, Catalasso is used strictly between God and man. Do you get it? The other one is between two men. But this one, a catalaso, is only used for relationship between God and man. And it is totally different, uh, uh, in comparison with the first one, which is dialaso, alright? Now, so let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians, our text. I told you that's our text. Let's see how far we could go with that, alright? Now, so, you find that word, and I want us to Understand this concept of reconciliation, all right? So it is the Greek word katalaso, that's a verb, the noun is called katalage, and it's also used in a compound form that is called apokatalaso. Now don't worry about that, when you come to the Bible school, you understand that better. All right, okay, now pay attention to this. The word katalaso is used, uh, it has double meaning. So you have to study the context to know which one apply. One, it can mean a change in God's disposition towards men, or man's change of disposition towards God. So when you see the word katalaso used in the Bible, it's either talking about God changing his disposition towards sinful man, or the sinful man changing his disposition towards God. And we're going to identify this in our text. So let's go back to our main text, Second Corinthians 5. We uh, read from 18, and then we go to verse 20. Are you there? Second Corinthians chapter 5. 18 to 21. Don't forget we are talking about the ministry of reconciliation, which is Jesus' ministry, and that we have a role to play to continue the ministry. And we say our role is the message of reconciliation, and it is a wonderful message. And we need to understand that message, and that's what we are trying to do this evening by the help of God. Verse 18 now. Now all things are of God who has re reconciled us to himself. So the word reconcile here is not dialaso, it is katalaso. Alright? Now uh, through Jesus Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the now reconciles the vow, and that is Catholic gay. All right. Now that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not in putting their trespasses to them, and He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. That is Catholic gay. Verse twenty. Now, now then, we are ambassador for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now, it, it appears contradictory. He started in verse 18, says he has reconciled us to God. In verse 20, he's asking us to be reconciled to God. Are, are you paying attention? Yeah. Did you notice that? Come on, let's, let's go back. We're doing Bible story. Go back to verse 18. Now all things of God, who has what? Reconcile us to himself. So action done, all right? So that is what God has done. But look at verse 20 now. It now says, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. And both are the same Greek word, katalaso. But I've told you that this Greek word has double meaning. One is God's change of disposition towards us. The second one is our change of disposition towards God. So the first one in verse 18 is say, God has changed his disposition towards us. And verse 20 is now saying, we now have to do what? Change our disposition towards God. Do you get it? Now let's go to Romans chapter 5 and then we quickly uh, summarize this if time allow, allow. Now Romans 5, 8 to 11, we are looking at the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus' ministry that has been given to us. All. Alright, verse 8 says, Romans 5, 8 to 11, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinner, Christ died for all. Pay attention to when we were reconciled to God, when we were what? still sinners. The word sinners there means wicked, rebel, enemies of God. Alright? Now, much more than having not been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse 10 says, for if when we were what? Enemies. 
Pay attention to this. We were what? Reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more. Having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Verse 11. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received what? The reconciliation. That's what I say, I have received. I have received. The reconciliation. The reconciliation. Now that's Catholic gay. Now pay attention to this. This is important. Don't miss it. Now these two scriptures that we read, our text and Romans chapter 5, now clearly present it. Number one, that reconciliation is a gift of God. He said you have received it. Are you listening to that? So, now, it's a friendship with God. Now, when you believe in Christ, when you put your faith in Him, when you confess Him as your Lord and Savior, you receive friendship with God. You don't beg for it, you don't pray for it, you don't try to have it. You receive relationship with God, intimacy with God. Is that right? Now, it is something that originated with God. It is not what we try to do. We are not the one that made the first move. You pay attention. It was God Himself. We are far away from God. Sin has separated us from God. Sin has built a barrier between us and God. There is no way a sinful man can draw closer to a holy God. You will die. You can't stand in his holy presence. Alright? So God had to come down in the person of Jesus to breach the gap, to be an arbitrator, to be a reconciler. He did it by himself. So reconciliation is accomplished by God. By God. And it is not a mutual one. Do you know why? Because when God turned towards us, we were yet his enemies. The first concept of reconciliation, both parties have to turn their face towards each other. Somebody pay attention? But in God's, in this Catalan, uh, 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 so concept of reconciliation, it is one party that comes in say, And guess who that was? That is God. When I still have my back towards God, God has turned his face towards me with his hands stretched out to receive me. That is the message of reconciliation. Before I ever say, I am sorry, he has forgiven my sin. That is the message of reconciliation. Before I ever realize this, the blood has already brought me here. That is the message of reconciliation. While I was his enemy, he stretched forth his hand of friendship to me. That is the message of reconciliation. There's no way you will understand this. You don't want to share it with someone. So you see, God did not wait for man to turn to him. It is not something mutual. It is not that God is saying, where you change and then I will change. No, he changed. He changed. He turned his disposition towards all. He stretched forth his hand to receive all. He opened up his heart towards all. He poured out forgiveness, love and mercy and compassion when I was still in disobedience. That is what makes it awesome. That's what makes it a wonderful message of reconciliation. That while I was his enemy, that is when he chose to be my friend. You see, so there is no mutual conception at all. God offered friendship to his enemies. When God offered friendship, no one was his friend. We were all sinners. We were God's enemy. So what that means is that there's no more enmity. There's no more hostility uh, uh, from God towards me anymore. Somebody, now that is what we need to tell the world. That is our power. We need to tell the sinner that God is not angry with them. Are, are you with me? Many of us still think God is angry with sinners. Then you don't understand the concept of reconciliation. If he was angry with them, he won't take their place on the cross. Somebody listen to me. No, he did that. That took care of his justice. His anger was at peace on the cross. God has no anger left for sinners. That is where we go out and tell sinners. Alright? You want to be God's friend? God, before you ever, you are born. God has already offered friendship to you. God has already offered relationship. God has already offered forgiveness and mercy and love and compassion to sinners. This is what the world needs to hear. Many people in the world still don't know. You know why some of them don't want to come to God, don't want to come to church? It's because of condemnation and guilt. They think God is angry with them. They think they are not clean enough. That is why we need to tell them the wonderful message of reconciliation. That God shed forth his heart. And God just wants to hug them. It doesn't matter how dirty, how, how, how mess up they are. That is what make it wonderful. There is no more enmity on God's part. Are you paying attention? Because his justice has been satisfied. Jesus already took our place on the cross. What God has left for sinner is love, mercy, forgiveness, compassion, salvation. That is what we need to tell sinner. That is the message 
of reconciliation. That Christ died for the ungodly. Alright? And now God wants to be our friend. Let's close with it. So, now, verse 20 that we did not say, then we need to tell them to be reconciled to God. Do you know what that means? It's not to clean up. It simply means to accept God's friendship. That's what it means. So change their disposition. They say, oh yes God, I thought you were still angry with me. No, now that I know you are not angry, God, you know what? I embrace you. I embrace your friendship. It's to tell them to run into God, stretch forth, embrace. Into God's hands, stretch forth to receive them. That is what we tell sinners. Is someone listening to what I'm talking about? That's what we tell them. That's what Paul said. Tell them to be reconciled to God. In other words, let them lay aside their hostility towards God. Let them cease to be God's enemy. Let them accept the friendship that God offers them. I think I'll stop here because time is gone. So next week we're going to uh, conclude on that. But you know what? You don't say you are not called. You are saved and called. We read that in Timothy. And we all have responsibility. It is a task. It is a work. So go out there and tell Sina the wonderful message of reconciliation. What Christ by his death on the cross has done. Now listen to me. That is what Christ lives in us to do. That is what he wants to accomplish. I want you to rise to your feet. I want to rise to your feet. What have you been doing with the task, with the ministry of reconciliation? How many people have you ever told? How many? It is a wonderful message. It's a wonderful message. Amen. I remember one, one, one day I was uh, uh, sharing this with, with a lady. She thought her line was totally messed. She said, Pastor, you don't understand. I did this thing willfully. I went into it. I knew what I was doing. I said, it doesn't really matter. That sin was judged and punished on the body of Christ. Amen. And you know what? Suddenly the Holy Spirit drove that truth into her. And her counting has just changed. He said, so you are saying that God can forgive that. I said, not that he can forgive. He forgave it already. He forgave it already. He gave us the gift of forgiveness of sin. There is no sinner that we hear that that will not turn to God. That will not run to them. You know why many of them are running away from God? Because God has been uh, uh, maligned and portrayed as an angry God that is just waiting to kill sinner. That is not true. That's not the message of reconciliation. Father, I just pray tonight. Much more than I could teach with words, Father. Much more than I could explain. That Lord, you will paint a very clear picture in the mind of your people of what Jesus did for us. Of Lord, the reconciliation that has already been accomplished, Father. And Lord, help us, Lord, to see our role and our power. That, Lord, you're not leaving us to proclaim this message of reconciliation. To go out there and tell people what Jesus has done. Lord, to persuade sinners to run into your embrace because you have no hunger left for them, Father. Hallelujah. Help us, Father. Lord, to, to, to communicate, Lord, effectively, accurately, your love and your compassion, your forgiveness and your salvation that you offer to sinners, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Lord, because we are no longer enemies. We are friends of God. We are no longer far away. We are near, Father. Father, we thank you. We rejoice in the gift of reconciliation. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org. Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening. <laughs>